so you've decided it's time to buy an RTU to monitor your remote site. But how do you decide which model is the best fit? Today we're going to look at the top three considerations that you need to think about when you're choosing an RTU. Hi, this is Andrew from DPS, and welcome back. Buying an RTU can be a little bit of a frightening proposition. For one thing, you're spending a lot of budget dollars. Second, this is equipment that you're going to be using for 10 years, maybe longer. We all know the pain of working with gear that just isn't a good fit for our networks, and I don't want that to be you, which is why now I'm going to equip you with the tools that you need to evaluate the difference between this just isn't a good fit for us, and this is exactly the RTU that we need. So let's start by looking at the first of our three important RTU considerations, capacity. RTU capacity breaks down into a few key types. First, we have our discrete inputs. These are simple on-off binary type inputs that we use for things like door sensors, motion sensors, and especially for equipment that will self-report alarms using contact closures. Next up, we have our analog inputs. These are much richer, and they are for continuous range type values, such as what is the temperature in the room? What's the humidity? How much fuel do I have left in my generator propane tank? What's my battery voltage? And therefore, what's my expected battery life remaining? Finally, we have our control relay outputs. These are used for the RTU to command other equipment to do certain things. You might be able to turn something on, turn something off, open a door. There's almost no end to what you can do with a control relay output. So what you need to do is go out to your site and look at everything you've got and decide how many of each of those three things you need, discretes, analogs, and controls. Once you've done that, add about 15% to those counts because you need to allow for reasonable future growth. The whole point of thinking about RTU capacity is splitting the middle between the hazard of running out and not having enough once you need it and the hazard of buying way more than you need and wasting your budget. Now let's look at the second of our important RTU considerations, power input voltage. Input power voltage is just as important for your RTU as it is for all of the rest of your gear. You need to know what voltage you're running out at your site and then choose an RTU with an input voltage that matches. We see a lot of negative 48 volts DC, a lot of plus 24 volts DC. If you're at a solar site, you might have plus 12 volts. And if you're in a data center or a server room type environment, it's very likely that you'll just want to run directly off of AC. You need to get this right, because if you don't, you're going to be stuck buying a transformer later, and that wastes a few budget dollars, but it also adds a point of failure to your system that doesn't need to be there. So finally, let's look at our third important RTU consideration, build quality and overall reliability. Quality and reliability are a bit harder to pin down than something like capacity or voltage, because they aren't just numbers. But I'll give you some questions that you can use when you're talking to manufacturers that will help you gain key insights into what you might expect. One great place to start is where do you do your engineering and where do you do your manufacturing? Is it something that you handle yourself? Is it done by another company? Is it done in another country? What kind of testing and measurement do you do before you have unleashed this product on the marketplace? Do you have a temperature chamber so you can test how the product performs in the very hot and the very cold? Have you done EMI testing where you see how much interference comes off of the product and therefore how much interference it's expected to absorb? Have you done under voltage testing, over voltage testing to make sure the power supply doesn't just fry? How long have you been in business? There's no guarantee that a company that's just been around for a long time is any good, but it's very hard for a brand new company to have developed the experience necessary to give you really high quality and really high reliability. Finally, how many of these things have you sold and who bought them? There's nothing better than a client list when it comes to knowing that you're purchasing proving technology and you're not just the guinea pig. If you have any questions about choosing an RTU, I would be happy to meet with you and talk about it. Just click the link in the description below to get in touch with me. If you found this video to be helpful, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Until next time, I wish you excellent network reliability.